I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I'm back with my Land Rover Discovery XD. Last time I replaced the fuel pump and hot wired it, only to find out that one of the fuel hoses was eaten by mice. Unfortunately, that hose is permanently attached to the fuel lines. You're supposed to unscrew the fuel filter from those hoses, and they're not really a replaceable item. So first, let's take a look at that problem and see if we can come up with a solution. If you remember from last time, I discovered that this hose after the fuel filter was eaten by mice. The fuel filter unscrews from the hoses, but the hoses are a permanent part of that pipe. So my plan is to cut the ends of the pipes off and then use normal hoses with hose clamps and then install a different filter in place. So let's see if I can get the pipe cut here. Not sure there's going to be enough room for a normal pipe cutter. Okay, it worked. The hose on the other side was not eaten, but as you can see, there is a little chew marks on it. So I'm going to cut this end as well. That should break off now once I get the fuel filter disconnected. The filter just has that one bolt holding it on, so I'll remove that. And hopefully I can pull this whole thing out. Now we can get a good look at that old hose. There's pretty much nothing left of it. So here's my plan. I have some fuel injection hose, some fuel injection clamps, and I got a metal fuel filter. So I'll put that in place, make a couple hoses on each side. I'll probably double up the clamps on the pipe end just to be careful. Here's my new filter setup. I'll cut the hoses once I get it installed, and then I'll move the hose clamps over, and I'll figure out a way to mount it. And at least this will hold it out of the way, if nothing else. Everything's installed. Let's try it out. Before I try to start it, I am tired of dealing with this battery. This is ruined. I have to charge it every time. Had to try to start it with a jump pack. So I'm going to take this out and put a new one in. I don't see any mouse nests, but a lot of leaves and things like that have fallen down in there. I'll vacuum that out now so it doesn't rust in there. It did end up exposing some rust holes down in there. In general, I'd say the battery tray is in pretty good shape though. It could be a lot worse than this. Well, turned off now. Let's try the doors. Okay, now the security is disabled. Last time I used this alligator clip with a pin on it to press into the wire to power up the fuel pump. Today I'm going to use this. I'm going to make myself a little wire that comes off of it that I can attach my power to to turn the fuel pump on and off. Now I see these used on cars all the time and these are a temporary thing. Don't be wiring your car up with these for something that's permanent. I'm going to put this on here, but this is only for a temporary thing until I can diagnose fixing the rest of the car. And how this works is it lets you stick a wire in this end, and then this end is open, so you can slip that over the other wire. And then once it's over the other wire, 
you can push this blade down and it goes on both sides of the conductor and connects the two wires together without you having to really damage any of the insulation. And then with a good wire in order to access the power for the fuel pump, I'm going to use the control box that I built this winter and I'll hook it up to this ignition switch that's protected so that I don't accidentally turn on the fuel pump when I don't want to. That way I can have good control over the fuel pump and possibly even just bring this up to the driver's seat with me. Now I can plug that into the wire that my ignition switch controls and I connect this connector to a battery source. For this quick test, the battery source will be a jump pack. Now if I flip up the ignition switch, it should turn the fuel pump on. I can hear it running. I don't hear it leaking on the ground this time. I can hear it pumping back to the tank now. I think we're ready to see if it'll start. Okay, first start, hopefully, the Land Rover XD. Okay, I didn't stop cranking it there, it stopped on its own. Looks like the starter has stopped working again. Probably have to hit it with a hammer. Let's try the hammer trick on the starter and the solenoid again. Try it again. Okay, the starter's not. There it goes. Might be hard to start the first time because we need the valves to clear themselves up. Doesn't seem to work. I thought that previously I had checked for a spark. Not sure that I actually did, so let's do that now. I'm gonna hook up my spark tester. You see me use this a bunch of times. Once I have it hooked up, I'll turn the lights off so that we can see it really well. Now if there is any spark, we'll see it flashing right here. Right, there was no spark there. So we seem to have found a British vehicle that has electrical problems. And on a vehicle like this, the problem could be in a lot of places. This model of the Discovery is distributorless. It has some coil packs back there, and it has a little crank sensor that tells the computer when it should be firing. I'm going to have to stop it there for today. I think that diagnosing the non-start issue can be a video all on its own. If you have any suggestions on what I should try next, comment below. I can't wait to have this Discovery XD running again. And honestly, I don't like pushing it around all the time. So if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.